All right, let's finish talking to everyone. Up the creek. Now the peasants Mickle will the guard say anything. Buys hunting trophies. Really? Chickens are dying like flies from the plague. Shame. Where did the gambler go? Huh. Hello. Hmm. Three ounces of optimum martyr, a drop of mercury solution. Uh, oh, sorry. I got lost in thought. Greetings. Greetings. I'm Cogstein, alchemist. Geralt, witcher. A witcher? How much would you ask for an opportunity to examine your body? I don't think you could afford it. You would be doing a great service to science. All right, fine. Though I perceived you as someone who valued reliable knowledge. I respect science and scientists, alchemists too. And I guess I expect the same in return. I see. Well, hmm. Maybe you can agree to a post-mortem then. Keep talking and I might change my mind. Regarding alchemists, that is. All right, all right. I'm sorry. They say you need ghoul blood. Do you have any? I'll come back when I've gathered some. I need that blood for my studies. Be quick about it. Hey, I wasn't done talking to you. What brings... You don't look like a local. I live in Vizima, but I'm just returning from a great convention of alchemists, pyromancers, and geomancers in Oxenfort. Wonderful city, which are a cradle of science. I don't doubt it. Did the convention reach any specific conclusions? It was an incredible experience. I presented my dissertation on... Specific? Conventions aren't meant to be specific. Then I'm not sure I see the sense. Science is like a great river, full of currents, whirls, and treacherous shallows. A single raftsman can never know every secret of the river. He must sail to the harbor and share his knowledge with other raftsmen. And get drunk and spend his last money on whores. I think I see the point now. Hmm. Science is like a river. Uh, sorry, I got lost in thought. You were talking about returning to Vizima. Ah, uh, yes. Because of this quarantine, I'm losing time in this inn. I have extremely important research waiting. And what am I doing sitting in this dump and drinking alcohol? Badly distilled alcohol. I've sent a message to my friend, another alchemist. He is my only hope. Hopefully he will send me a pass. Hmm. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. They must admit me, they must. Well, there's another insight for you into how science works. <laughs> Pretty much anything. Uh... Do you ask everyone for permission to examine or dissect them? Of course not. But you're a mutant. A scientifically wrought improvement. Something unnatural. That explains it. Don't take offense. I'm merely curious. Need any help from a witcher? I do. Check the notice I hung outside. I wanted to ask you about alchemy. Finally, someone worth talking to. Here I thought the locals had no interests beyond their daily concerns. I'm not exactly a local. And think about it. If the locals were all interested in alchemy, they wouldn't have much need for you. Ha! Typically short-sighted. Witcher, alchemy is the mother of all sciences. And do you know why? For it allows us to understand the world. All that surrounds you is none other than the alchemy you strive so dutifully to deride. Alchemical processes transpire in your body at all times. They allow you to eat, breathe, and excrete. What's more, they are responsible for your thoughts and feelings. Alchemy is life. We need to change the subject before the peasants decide to burn us at the stake. One cannot shut the mouth of science. But fine, what do you wish to know? Eternal alchemy. How do you obtain alchemical bases? You need equipment to obtain the correct distillate. I myself use an atonator. Coupled with an alembic, 
and equipped additionally with a rectifying column and a copper cooler. And if I don't have a coupled attenator handy? I see. Field work. Hmm. Olaf must have some decent vodka or spirit that could serve as an alchemical base. Where do I get ingredients? If you wish to obtain components yourself, you'll need books containing drawings and descriptions of ingredients derived from both plants and animals. Peddlers are your other alternative, but they'll rip you off. When I require monster tissue or organs, hmm, well, I hire a witcher or a hunter. I'm interested in formulae. Ready-made formulae are rare and difficult to acquire, so I encourage you to experiment, modify recipes you already have. Most people underestimate the value of using the empirical method in science. I think I've heard enough. But we've only just begun. Farewell. Albedo? Yeah. Yes, this solution... I never experimented in this game, somehow. I don't think I ever had enough ingredients. But then I never got too far. Let's loot the barrel. Oh, we had beer here all along. Oh well. Wow, so much food. Who wants to get slapped? That I can take and no one says anything to me. Innkeeper. And more barrels. And a basket. Awesome. Let's go through our journal, shall we? Kalkstein. This absent-minded alchemist seems, seems nice, but is it, it is obvious that scientific theories are of greater concern to him than the more prosaic aspects of life. A boy named Alvin managed to escape the Bargast attack, which cost his foster mother her life. As a result of the shock, he started to divine the future and utter the prophecy of Ithlin. I suppose Alvin is a source. He has magical powers he cannot control. Soon after I arrived in the outskirts, I met Shani, an acquaintance from a long time ago, in quite dramatic circumstances. Shani is completely devoted to medicine, her passion, and she had plenty to do in the outskirts, so there was no time for small talk. I got the impression that this sensible, intelligent girl likes me a lot. Oh. <laughs> Triss. After Leo's funeral... I don't remember if you read this one. I think we did. After Leo's funeral, the sorceress teleported to Vizima. She decided to use her extensive contacts and search for information on Salamandra. Triss promised to find me as soon as I arrive in Vizima. Vesna, a barmaid from the tavern in the outskirts. Vesna is quite a determined girl. She sells food and alcohol. Now, if you're confused... Vizima is the city we want to get to, and we're actually in the outskirts of Vizima, so city is nearby, but due to the plague, as we've been told, the gates are closed, and as the alchemist mentioned, he needs a pass to go through, and he's stuck here, same as us. Now let's see locations. The inn in the outskirts was established to cater to the needs of travelers and merchants headed for Vizima. Vizima? The owner has surrounded it with a high palisade. Although the inn doesn't feature extravagant comforts, it is a safe place to spend the night and eat a meal. The innkeeper also offers a wide selection of alcohol. Mm. It is a favorite meeting place for the inhabitants of the outskirts, so there is always someone to talk to or dice with. Temeria's population is not exclusively human. It also includes dwarves, elves, gnomes and dryads. After the devastating war with Nivelgard, many areas are haunted by monsters which have hitherto not constituted a serious threat, while the realm's roads are made unsafe by outlaws and common bandits. As a result, the witcher profession is once again in demand, though people continue to treat witchers with caution and disdain, often calling them mutants and freaks. 
The kingdom of Temeria has silver lilies on a black background as its emblem. This powerful country has gained ever more influence in recent years under the wise rule of King Foltest. Across the Ponta River, the kingdom borders Redania. To the south and east, it is hemmed in by mountain ranges, including Mahakam, the mainstay of dwarves and gnomes, past which lie the lands of Valyria and Adrian. Suppose this is the mountain range. The capital of Temeria is Vizima, lying on the shore of Lake Vizima. Ta -da! The second largest city is Maribor. Temeria mints its own coin, the Oren. The most widespread religions are the cult of Melitel and the belief in the eternal fire. Fire, fire, everywhere. Temeria is home to the headquarters and many commanderies of the Order of the Flaming Rose. The outskirts. Like any large city, Vizima also has its outskirts. That's where we are. Near the city walls stand the houses of townspeople who could not afford to live in the city or could not stand the stench of its gutters. That would have been the second uh, group. A little further out, amongst fields and meadows, peasants have their thatched roof homes. Unfortunately, the hard times have left their mark on the outskirts. Many houses are vacant, their owners killed in the war slain by monsters or taken by the plague which ravages the area. Oh boy, look at all this. Catriona, a disease which quickly spread through all the northern countries after the war with Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard. Those who suffer from Catriona die a terrible death. Their convulsions become stronger each day, they vomit blood and mucus and have bloody diarrhea. After a fortnight or so they die in agony. Does anyone know what equivalent it is to in the real world, I wonder? I don't know. Dwarves. Are shorter than humans, but tougher and more muscular. Male dwarves wear long beards. They are usually gruff, but can be merry, and are renowned for their stubbornness. The stubbornness of dwarves. Considered excellent craftsmen and warriors, many have earned grudging acceptance in human society. Still, it is not uncommon for young dwarves to join the Scotiatel rebels to fight for more rights for non-humans and an end to persecution. An old elven prophecy about the end of the world, Ithlin's prophecy. And this is exactly what the boy said, so I won't read it again. We didn't get any new monsters. No new ingredients or formula. We have some new quests, ghoul blood for Kalkstein, and I should speak with the reverend about Salamandra. This is again the um, notice board quest, and as well as this one. And I must see the reverend if I want to solve the mysteries of the outskirts. Let's look at our inventory. We read these. Book of the Swallow. Ah, oh, strange. It it gives you actually information on quite a few potions. C cat enables night vision. This one I'm a bit confused about. Wasn't it one of the witcher's mutations that enabled them to see in the darkness? Oh well. Maybe they mean like total darkness. Frighteners vision. Notes containing the formula for a potion made using a frighteners eye. The potion grants one bronze talent when consumed. This and this. Anything else we need to read? The book we want. The beastier describes necrophages, the ghoul and the gravir. It provides info on fighting methods and alchemical ingredients. Perfect. And I think that is it. So now if we go to our journal again, we see uh, different ingredients. And if we go to formula, we can see information about the potions. Cat is said to have been the first potion created specifically for witchers. The concoction allows witchers to pursue monsters into their lairs, including dark caves, ruins and crypts, because it augments vision to pick up additional wavelengths of light. To prevent blinding, the imbiber's pupils automatically narrow when in bright light. This is possibly the potion most commonly used by witchers. 
And you see we need two of Rebus, sorry, two of Cree Breath and one of Rebus. Pretty easy to make, as we'll find out. Blizzard. Witchers usually drink the Blizzard potion immediately before combat. The potion is also favored in especially dangerous situations. So what does it do? Brief duration, medium toxicity, improves reflexes and reaction time. Hmm, parry and evade attacks. Interesting. And Necrophage. Is oil, not a potion. Necrophages are accustomed to poisonous vapors, yet even the most rancid ghouls and graviers cannot withstand the poison wounds inflicted by a blade coated with the necrophage oil. Now this is interesting, it's long lasting. So basically if we go to find ghouls and graviers, however those are, we can coat our blade and make cause more damage. There you go, Grivir. After the war with Nilfgaard, Graviers became a real plague. Until then the monsters were familiar only to specialists and professional beast killers. Thus everyone mistook them for ghouls. Today any child could give an accurate description of a Gravier, and people who have passed near battlefields or necropolises offer first-hand accounts of the horrible murders committed by these ruthless necrophages. Sensitive to silver, necrophage oil, strong style. Immune to poison and not down. Ghouls are said to have been, sorry, <laughs> humans who were once forced into cannibalism and after many years spent in dark crypts underwent a horrifying transformation. Only human flesh can satisfy their eternal hunger, so they kill people and store the remains in the recesses of their lairs. And again, sensitive to the same stuff, strong style. Well, there we go. I might have missed one character. So if our cursor was on Kalkstein. Oh, it was on Kalkstein, or was it? Oh well. I think that's it. Enough reading for now. We read everything. Anyone new in the tavern? Oh god. I keep using the wrong keys because I use quite a different binding to play Guild Wars 2. No one knew the gambler is gone somewhere. So let's head out. We don't really. Oh, we do need to rest, but I'm not going to pay him 5 Orans. Can we use this one? No. We can use, however, the. Uh, what you call it? <laughs> the what? The fire pit? No. Huh? Oh, what do? You, what do you call that thing? Fireplace. Really, you call these things fireplaces? Be alert. Traveler, herbalist. We talk to. Mercenary, traveler, unknown herb. <gasps> Herb. We do need to buy a book about herbs. How much money do we have? 132. That won't be enough. That will not be enough. Let's use this. To the new talents. So what did we put our talents into? We put it into intelligence. Some group steel. Some fast steel and strong steel. And hard. We went for stun. Angle, cause it's not down. Power of So what does this do? It's not clear. Now, if we go, I think it is strength, or is it? Brawl. Unlocks power up during fist fights. It's a nice one. Strength in general will give us more damage and resistances. And we have six talents. Ah, we don't need buzz. Wow, damage plus 50 only when we are under quarter health and requires consumption of a mutagen. We'll pass for now. Fairy, artillery regeneration, 
how how much total we got? It's not clear. It's a plus one per second, how much is that? Let's get the brawl. Let's put bleeding damage. Wow. Ow. Less than 15% vitality, that's not likely. Second attack in sequence. Oh, okay, I remember now. So this attack uh, affects the first attack. Let's put the 20%. And let's do the same for fast. And for group. And that should be good for now. Let's meditate. Do we want to make any potions? We can't really because we don't have enough ingredients. If you wanted to make Friday vi Vision, you would need a green and a yellow one. Okay. 